So we got our initial term and our ratio. Uh, this is a multiplicative sequence, even though it has a exponent, it is not an exponential sequence, it's a multiplicative sequence. Uh, that name will become, or make more sense why it's called multiplicative when you see what the actual terms look like. So what we're gonna do is um, write down a sequence and then write down the multiplicative formula for it. This is gonna look kind of similar to our last sequence, except definitely different. Starts out kind of similar. All right, let's try to do a additive uh, formula. So how do we go from three to one? We could subtract four. Uh, oops, by subtract four, I mean add four. Uh, let's see, can I add four here? One plus four is five which is not the same as negative one third. So that fails, and of course it would keep failing if we try to keep adding four, we don't uh, get this pattern at all. So that's out. We are not adding here. Let's try multiplying. What do I multiply by to go from negative three to one? That's kind of tricky. Here's much easier to see. What do I multiply one by to get negative one third? Negative one third. Now, if I leave it like this, it looks like I'm writing additive. So what I do to uh, remind myself this is multiplicative is I put parentheses around it like I'm multiplying. All right, let's try to apply that negative one third here. What is negative three times negative one third? Two negatives make a positive, three times a third is one. So that gets us to one. Let's multiply by negative one third here. See what we get. Negative one third times negative one third is positive one third squared also known as positive one ninth. Last up, negative one ninth times negative one, or positive one ninth times negative one third is negative one twenty seventh. All right, so we got our formula, or we have our ratio here. So this is the R value. And R stands for ratio, and it's what you would multiply. It's the ratio of one term to the next. So if you multiply any term by negative one third, you will get the term that follows it. A zero, it's the initial term, is again, negative three. All right, using that multiplicative multi sequence formula, if I could speak, there we go. I'm just gonna fill that in. A n is negative three times ratio negative one third to the n power. Actually, I'm gonna modify where I wrote the N up here. That may not seem like a big deal uh, in this form to have parentheses. I'm leaving them in because in this form, if I erase the parentheses, uh, that's very ambiguous looking right there. And so you're gonna to need to keep those parentheses around. So again, you should be slightly skeptical. Don't believe everything I say. We are going to do some testing here. A0, I'm gonna plug in zero wherever I see n. All right, any number to the zero power? Well, almost any number to the zero power is one. And negative three times one is negative three. Now I said almost every number to the zero power is one. Uh, we have a problem when we write zero to the zero power. And good news is we won't actually have to deal with that until calculus two. So don't worry about that. Any number of the zero power is one, and zero raised to any power is zero. So those two rules are in conflict when the power and the base are both zero. We won't need to worry about that here though. All right, so that's a zero term. A one term. We got negative three times negative one third. They completely cancel out to the number one, positive one. A two. Uh, we don't really need to keep checking these. Uh, it'll work out. I could just count and say, oh, there's five terms. So I know exactly where uh, it's going to end. Uh, the way I am writing these uh, formulas down is assuming we're starting at the zero term. 
And same thing up here, assuming we're starting our index at zero. They're the most simple if you, if you start your index at zero. All right, where do I end it? We saw before the answer to that is four because there's five terms. Uh, let's instead use some algebra to get there. So let's pretend we don't know that four goes there. So I want a big end equal negative 1 27th. And I'm going to write the formula down for a n. All right, step one, let's get this uh, negative three out of here. So multiply both sides by negative three. Uh, so I suck at multiplication. So I'm gonna write 1 27th is 1 third cubed times negative 1 third. And this is positive one over three to the fourth power. Yes, three to the fourth power is 81, but I don't really feel like multiplying. So this is a better way to keep track of that. All right, we are here. Now, there's a few ways to solve this. I'm trying to solve for n, so I think uh, we could take use a, a log to flip this around, absolutely. Uh, but before I do that, I'm not a big fan of fractions. So what I'm gonna do is reciprocate both sides. If I uh, write that down in some notation, I would write it as uh, take a negative first power uh, on both sides. All right, so we have, and the reason I'm doing that is gonna f eventually flip both fractions over. Uh, so we have, let's see, n times one. So powers of powers of products, a to the b to the c power, is a to the b times c power. So this is one third to the negative n, and this is one third, a positive one third to the negative four. Now I'm gonna flip the fractions over by making their exponents positive. And three divided by one is just three. Three divided by one is just three. So right here, bases match. That means n is equal to four. There are other ways to do this. Algebra, I just chose to go this route. n equals four, that's our end index. So we write that right there. All right, that is our multiplicative sequence uh, written out. There are other, uh, some other sequences. I'm gonna stick to uh, additive and multiplicative on your uh, final exam. We are gonna look at two other types. There's really infinite other types of sequences, but we'll just look at two types here. Now I recommend considering additive first, multiplicative second, and then other types third. So if I take an additive approach, I get plus one, and obviously I don't get plus one again, because plus one would take me to two, not to four. So additive is out, it breaks down quickly. I'm gonna go multiplicative. Well, I can't multiply zero by anything to get to one, so multiplicative, can't even get me to the first term. So that's out. So on these other types of sequences, if additive and multiplicative don't work, you really have to start thinking outside the box a lot more. You may have remember problems like this from way back in elementary school where you had to figure out patterns and nobody probably used the words like additive and multiplicative. 
So what type of numbers have this pattern? 0, 1, 4, 9, 16. Well, these are all squares. They're familiar squares. So this is 0 squared, 1 squared, 2 squared, 3 squared, 4 squared. So we're going to have n squared from 0 up to 4. Looking down at the second uh, row of numbers, it's pretty easy to see how that works out. Your index is at 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. Those are your indexes, and then you just have to square them. And you got your terms. Uh, there shouldn't be too many other problems that are obscure like this. Um, there is a cubic. This is a squared uh, sequence. You could have a cubic sequence um, or a fourth power, but those get really obscure. And I don't really know progression of cubes that well past eight. Um, it would go zero, one, eight, something else that I can't think of. Uh, but there is one other type, and these are factorials. We'll start with the definition. Exclamation point is the notation for factorials. Technically, the only actual ones defined are 0 and 1 factorial, and then after that, n plus 1. You know, we'll define it with just n factorial. n factorial is n times n minus 1 times n minus 2 times times times, keep multiplying until you get down to 1. And you don't want to go to 0. Because if you go all the way to 0, every term would be 0. And that's kind of a boring uh, sequence. So that is the definition. From the definition, we can write down 2 factorial is 2 times 1, which is 2. 3 factorial is 3 times 2 times 1. So I could write that down as 6. What I want to do instead is regroup. So 3 factorial is 3 times 2 times 1. It's also 3 times 2 factorial. Either way, you're getting 6. 4 factorial is definitely 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. Starting to get annoying. Also could write it as 4 times 3 factorial. 3 factorial we just said was 6. 4 times 6, 24. You will get the same thing if you multiply here, but we're just going to save a little time. And as you start to get up higher in the factorials, it would be ridiculous to write down every term. So 5 factorial is where I'm going to draw the line and say this is just 5 times 4 factorial. I could write as 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1, but I think it's better to just keep it in this form. 4 factorial is 24, 5 times 24 is 120. 6 factorial is 6 times 5 factorial. And that is 6 times 120, which is 720. I'm not this good at multiplication, um, but I am this good at remembering the first six terms of factorials. Uh, I don't know the next one, but it'd be pretty easy to get if you just multiply 7 by 720, etc., uh, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera, et cetera. You can, so what I did here is what I call factoring out a factorial. And so this is some algebra that can be useful at different times. So for example, n plus 1 factorial is n plus 1 times n factorial, 
I am being very careful with parentheses and the exponent, or not the exponent, the uh, exclamation point. The exclamation point modifies, or its input is whatever is to the left. So this exclamation point here is only for the N right next to it. Whereas the exclamation point here on the left side, what's to the left of the exclamation point, this entire, because it has parentheses around it, the entire N plus one is next to it. So it would not be correct to, if I saw this written down, uh, the, what is next to the exclamation point? Well, then only the one is next to it. So that would not be correct to leave it in that form. And of course, you could break out or factor out a second factor and you could bring out n plus one and an n and then just say, oh, well, what's left over? n minus one factorial is left over. And you could factor out, here I factored out two. I could keep factoring. Now you wanna be a little bit careful if, you're, if you know your n value is small. Um, you know, if, for example, if n equals one, what in the world is, those two terms are gonna mess you up. So you won't generally have to worry about that too much though. All right, so that's how factorials work. And we will wait into, uh, we will do a series uh, next. And we'll start with multiplicative.